Hey everyone, it's Gizly here and welcome back to more Starry Flowers. The entire house had become neat and tidy. Okay, I think I'm satisfied. You? Hmm, don't you think you deserve to be rewarded for all your hard work? Uh, I should have seen that one coming. But no, not right now. I should actually get going. So, you, you just turned up to tidy Periwinkle's house and then immediately leave. Okay, you do you. You won't stay? I promised Gumdrop I'd be back for the afternoon shift. She'll start to worry if I don't come back soon. Hmm, I'll save your reward for next time then. Pastille slips on his jacket and shoes. Just before he leaves, he turns back to face Periwinkle. By the way, um, I was thinking... Yes? There are some days my friends travel out of town, for alchemy stuff. So if you ever wanted to drop by while I'm working on those days, I think that'd be okay. That's, um, the most I can do right now. Sorry. I'll gladly take you up on that. I'd love to keep you company. Great. Okay then. Oh dang, look how forward he is now. <laughs> That's cute. Before saying goodbye and walking out of the door. Periwinkle's so flustered. What was all of that? It was extremely domestic. I can't be imagining things, can I? He said it was okay to come and visit him. That has to mean something, doesn't it? Periwinkle begins pacing around the room. Now, now, let's not get carried away. This is a delicate situation. Dropping these intense feelings onto him out of nowhere may only serve to scare him off. Neither of us was looking for a committed relationship from the beginning. That was made explicitly clear early on. And yet... And yet... He isn't playing fair. My heart can't take this. Periwinkle throws himself onto the couch dramatically. There's no way I'll be able to stop thinking of him now. Even being at home has become a reminder in and of itself. Everything is nice because of him, and now I'm suffering. Oh yeah, sounds like a real hard time. This is simply too much. There has to be a way for me to safely indulge in these romantic feelings. Things are fine as they are, progressing even. If I just let it run its natural course, then maybe we'll end up... Ugh. What do I want out of this? To be with him forever? Me? I haven't had a single healthy long-term relationship in my entire life. Love isn't in the cards for someone like me. Well, as much as you think that, I think it's trying its darndest to be part of your life anyway. Ugh, I, I can't even recognise myself right now. Ugh, calm down. I'm overreacting again. Nothing has effectively changed just yet. I can't keep fighting myself on this. I'm in love with Pastille. No matter what it entails, that's the reality. He still isn't quite ready for me to meet his friends, which means there isn't any room to advance further at the moment. I have to be patient. At the very least, I hope accepting all this lets my magic return to normal. Ugh, I need a nap. And so, over the next few weeks... Periwinkle would come by Atelier Suites to spend time with Pastille. Okay. Get to pick another outfit. Let's make it something real cute. We're breaking the flower crown out again, guys. And... Hmm. Let's do love hearts. Why not? Super cute. He always stood there so sweetly behind the counter. And then I would waltz in, pretending to be just another customer, browsing the aisles before meandering over to him. Others would stop in every now and again, but there was ample time in which I had him completely to myself. That's when I take the opportunity to chat. <laughs> this place smells just like you, my sweet. I think it's the other way around. D do I smell like candy or something? Why else do you think I want to eat you up? Please don't say things like that when there are customers here. Customers? I don't see anyone. Uh, I know, I mean, just in general. 
You don't want to get turned on at work? Well, that makes a lot of sense. It's not like he can really act on it. That's, that's not allowed. Our exchanges were mostly innocent, unlike other partners I'd paid visits to in the past. He was very adamant about not fooling around at work. Not that it ever stopped me from teasing him about it. Periwinkle watches as Pastille, armed with a rag and a bottle of cleaner, sprays down the counter in front of him. <laughs> I think I underestimated your love of cleaning. Are you making fun of me? This is my job, you know. Oh, should I have paid you when you cleaned my house? I'll send you an invoice. Could I pay you in kisses? That's hard to turn down, actually. Oh, adorable. It was fun seeing him hard at work. The only side of him most people would ever be aware of. They'll never know of the lust bubbling beneath the surface. His nervous, vulnerable laughter when I've said something he wanted to hear. His gentle touch. The way he can take my hand so casually and yet becomes a stuttering mess as soon as I lean over him. His sense of humour, his sincerity, his quirks, his genuine desire to always provide the exact perfect thing to make me smile. No, the depths of Pastille are reserved for me alone. Well, how do you know he's not seeing someone else on the side? It might not just be yours. After all, he doesn't want a committed relationship. Welcome to Atelier Suites. Periwinkle gives a little twirl and winks to Pastille, who's trying his best to stifle his laughter. How was that? Do you think it suits me? Not in the slightest. You're too elegant for a place like this. I can be cute too, can't I? You are, but you're going to need more than that on your resume if you want the job. What? You mean I can't get in through nepotism alone? It looks like you already have a successful career in another field. You're overqualified, so I'm gonna have to turn you down. <laughs> You're right. Besides, if you were my boss, we'd probably have to stop f***ing. But Perry! I truly, truly love him. Even the days we'd talk about nothing at all, I wouldn't give up for the world. And the days he would open up to me even more so. Sai can really be frustrating sometimes. But she's my best friend. I still care about her even when she messes up. <laughs> she's lucky to have you. Yeah, she really is. Anyone else would have given up on her by now. For years she would just lock herself in her lab making all this candy, bragging about how cool her alchemy is compared to magic. She barely ever talked to anyone else, and when she did it was to berate them over something. Who treats her own customers like that? Who do you think pays for the roof over our heads? Oh, sorry. I don't want to give you a bad impression of her. She's gotten much better recently. It sounds complicated. At least your patience is paying off, hmm? Yeah, seems like it. At one point it was kind of up to a coin toss on whether I'd stay or go. A coin toss? How extreme! N not literally. It was more like whether or not she could prove she actually felt empathy. Anyway, it turns out she's not a complete monster. So here I am. Sorry, I'm still giving you a bad impression of her, aren't I? Y you can just disregard everything I said. Sai is great. Hmm, yeah, somehow I don't think we can just <laughs> shake that one off. I believe you. She must be if you've put up with so much from her. <laughs> yeah. I treasured every moment I got to spend with Pastille. Even without a label on what exactly our relationship was, I could enjoy myself all the same. In truth, I was only biding my time, but it didn't really feel like that at all. Just being near him was enough. One day, he finally asked it. The question I'd been waiting to hear. Do you want to meet my friends? Oh, he's taking it to the next level. Ah, well, yes, but... Are you sure? No, but it feels stupid to keep avoiding it. I started worrying it had happened on accident one of these days. I, I don't think I would survive that, so... We should just go, before I change my mind. Ah, uh, right now? Y 
yes, come on. Pastille takes Periwinkle by the hand, and the pair hastily makes their way to Atelier Suites. Slightly out of breath, Pastille stops just before they reach their destination. Okay, give me a minute. After we rushed all the way here, don't back down now, my sweet. I know, I'm preparing mentally. I've never done this before. I know it'll be fine, I just... Take your time, we'll go in when you're ready. Uh, okay, I think I'm only getting more nervous standing out here thinking about it. Let's just go in. After you. The meeting itself was nothing memorable. Gumdrop was incredibly human for a golem made out of candy. Syrup was about what I expected, curt but also warm. For all its build-up, the interaction itself was anticlimactic. A quick exchange of pleasantries before the candy alchemist called our golem back downstairs. It didn't feel real. Had I acted normal? Come across as my usual self? It had only just happened, but it's already a blur. I held Pastille's hand in the end. I remember that. He had been so nervous I could practically hear his heart beating out of his chest. I hadn't understood just how stressful it would be for him. I felt guilty at having put him through it, although the idea was his to begin with. He decided to go through that for himself, or for me. This seemingly mundane interaction that meant so much more for the both of us. Pastille? Sorry, I'm okay. I feel stupid having made such a big deal of it. Of course it all turned out just fine. It was important to you. We all get worked up over things we care about, don't we? Are you including yourself in that? You seem like you always have it together. Oh, am I hiding it that well? <laughs> anyway, um, we can go. How is he going to react when he discovers what a mess I've been? Well, he doesn't need to know. You can keep that quiet. Pastille walks me home and promises to return later tonight. Things will move forward from there, won't they? Or is it too soon? Maybe it's too much for one day. I don't want to add to his stress. Ugh, why is this so difficult? His perception of me could be completely destroyed. Tarnished. But that's a risk worth taking, isn't it? I mean, if you truly, really, truly love him, then it's worth risking, I would say. That night, Periwinkle laid on the floor in the middle of his living room and waited. I'd expected this night to come eventually, and yet, I still don't feel any more prepared for it. Periwinkle idly taps his wand to one of the candles on the table. Still, Peachy, the curse is not yet lifted. Pastille's knock finally comes, and Periwinkle rises to answer. Oh, it smells nice in here. Is that your magic? You like it? It's my latest specialty. Ah, oh, what a treat. Have you eaten yet? I can make us a special dinner. Oh, what's the occasion? Celebrating the fact nothing went terribly wrong today. I brought a few things, if I could just borrow your stove. By all means. I once again found myself in the excruciatingly domestic situation of watching Pastille prepare a meal in my kitchen. There's no way he doesn't realise it, right? That we've been acting as a couple for a long time now. I wonder if, um, the way Pastille sees it is that they've just fallen into that relationship and he doesn't need to ask out Periwinkle? Maybe he's just like, well, we're in it now. <laughs> it's just that neither of us are bothered to address it. Shouldn't it be properly acknowledged? Pastille chats with me as he cooks, but I'm admittedly distracted by these thoughts. Perhaps putting a name to it would only cause it to unravel. Currently there's no expectation. We're free to see whoever else we like. Though it doesn't seem either of us are doing that. Pastille approaches the table where Periwinkle sits, holding a plate in each hand. Ta-da! Pasta's ready! Oh, that does look yummy. I mean, it does just look like spaghetti with some herbs thrown on top, but, you know, I wouldn't turn it down. <laughs> Ooh, bon appetit! 
Maybe he's already decided we're a couple, and I'm just obsessing over formalities. What does it matter so long as the two of us are happy? And I really am happy. His cooking tastes wonderful. Perry, you okay? Hmm? Yes? You're being so quiet, I started to worry that I messed up our dinner somehow. No, no, it's delicious. I was just lost in the pasta, is all. Forgive me, I didn't mean to worry you. I need to get out of my own head. Pastille is here in front of me, and I'm too distracted to savour it. Forget my doubts, we'll just have to see where the night takes us. Periwinkle takes his plate to the sink and begins to wash up. Uh, I can take care of that. Nonsense. You just cooked us dinner. It's your turn to relax, my sweet. Are you sure I can't help? I wouldn't mind at all. Yeah, he's, he likes cleaning. Just let him help. <laughs> you can help by bringing me your plate when you're finished. Okay. Pastille does as he's told, then wanders over to the couch. Hey, um, if you have anyone you want to introduce me to, I'd be happy to meet them. Return the favour sort of thing. I, I know it can be awkward though, so if not, that's okay too. <laughs> no one comes to mind. Huh? Really? Sure, I know a lot of people, but I couldn't say I'm particularly close with any of them. Except maybe one, but you've already met my business partner. Oh, at the apothecary, right? Precisely. Hmm? What's with that look? N no, nothing. I just don't know what to say now. <laughs> you expected someone as charismatic as me to have all sorts of new people to introduce you to then. I guess so. I'm just surprised. I am really like being around you, so I expected that to be true for your other friends too. Well, look at it this way. Periwinkle just surrounds himself with people that he you know, once in a sexual manner, and since he doesn't want any sort of committed relationship for the most part, it makes sense that he wouldn't want to get too close to any of these people. Hmm. I'd say you're probably the closest I've ever been with someone. Literally speaking. They laugh together, then fall into a comfortable silence. With their heads leaned together, Periwinkle nuzzles his face into Pastille's shoulder affectionately. After a few moments, Pastille asks, Do you want to get in bed? For sleep or for pleasure? Uh, um, that's up to you. Periwinkle stands, then turns around to take Pastille's hands. Come then. He leads him into the bedroom, closing the door behind him. When he does, Pastille speaks up again. You know... I'm still finding it hard to believe there's no one else you're close to. Hmm, two is a reasonable number. You had two friends as well, did you not? Syrup and Gumdrop. Fair point, but counting you makes three. <laughs> you have me beat. Perhaps I should try harder to catch up. Periwinkle collapses into bed, while Pastille sits down beside him. I think I've preferred it, though keeping a healthy distance from others. Really? How come? The alternative has been disastrous in my experience. I'm far too intense. <laughs> what do you mean by that? Goodness, my best example is the worst one. In my teenage years, there was a boy I would have done anything for. I wanted his approval so badly. I wanted to be loved. It's funny. I can't even think of what drew me to him. I suppose he was just a vessel to project onto, an idealised boyfriend, this shortcut to happiness. <laughs> Poor guy, he didn't know what to do with the torrent of feelings I'd been forcing onto him. We were young. A love like that is much too painful, if it can even be called love. It took some practice to be able to separate the emotions out, to be able to indulge in the romantic and sexual energy I craved while protecting my fragile heart. But you're not protecting it now, you're being very, you know, outspoken about your feelings. But ever since I figured it out, I've gotten to experience all sorts of love through these casual flings. What am I saying? 
It's perfect for me. The ideal life, really. Periwinkle, you're pushing him away with these words. Don't listen to me, Pastille. Hmm. I don't know if your heart is as fragile as you think. You don't believe me? Despite what it seems, I have the heart of an innocent maiden. <laughs> I don't know about innocent, but... Pastille leans forward and lays his head on Periwinkle's chest. Sounds pretty strong to me. Oh, Periwinkle, <laughs> you don't know how to deal with this. Now you're the one being flustered all the time. Ah, it's beating harder now. But because you've suddenly embraced me. See, this is what I mean by fragile. Periwinkle struggles out from under him, and the pair sits facing each other on the bed. You know, at first I thought romantic stuff was just a formality for you. But you actually love it, huh? Are you only realising that now? <laughs> I guess not. What are you trying to say, Pastille? That it's okay for me to love you? That I'll be safe? Then hurry up and kiss me. Okay, sorry to keep you waiting. Pastille closes the distance between them. I'm too weak. The words won't come out. As they kiss... Periwinkle becomes more and more entangled in his thoughts. It hurts. I want to be even closer. He lets himself fall backward, bringing Pastille down with him. This isn't nearly enough to satisfy me. Just please, don't stop. Periwinkle's heart cried out. His jumbled emotions caught in his throat, manifesting through his hands clinging desperately to Pastille who continued to kiss him and hold him through the night. The next morning, Periwinkle steps out onto his doorstep with a heavy sigh. If I lay around in bed all day, I'll only feel even more miserable. I need to stop avoiding my work. I have to talk to Astragalus. She isn't going to be pleased with me, though. Holding his mantle tightly, he makes his way to the apothecary. When he arrives, Astragalus is preoccupied with arranging some of her merchandise. She turns abruptly at the unexpected sound of the door's chime. Hey, we're not open yet. Huh? Periwinkle? Good morning, Astragalus. I haven't seen you all month. I barely recognised you under that hood. I was about to come and knock on your damn door if you didn't show your face here soon. You've got a huge backlog of orders waiting. I can't take them. My magic is useless. What do you mean, useless? Periwinkle meekly hands over one of his pale pink vials. This is all I can make. It's been this way for ages. <sighs> Let's see. Astragalus unscrews the top and eyes Periwinkle suspiciously before giving it a whiff. Phew, that's powerful. Not bad, though. Warms me right up. Could stand to be diluted a little, just to make it less overwhelming. So, what's got you stuck on a scent like this? It's Pastille. He's ruined me. I'll never be able to return to the way I was before. I see. So things got complicated, just like I warned you. <laughs> I love him so much, I think I might die. Come on, back room, now. Periwinkle nods and obediently follows Astragalus into her private office. He quietly takes in his surroundings before she suddenly turns to him with a raised finger. Don't touch anything. Astragalus drags a beanbag chair out from the corner and plops it in the middle of the room unceremoniously. Sit. It's dusty. Ugh, you're such a diva. She gives it a couple good smacks, beating the dust into the air instead. Now sit. Very well. He complies, and Astragala spins her office chair around to face him. This seems like a very formal meeting. I suppose they are business partners, so it could be considered that. Alright, Periwinkle, here's what's going to happen. I'm going to brew us up some tea, and you're going to explain everything, from the beginning. Explain what? About Pastille, even the stuff I already know, everything from the top everything. Skip the bedroom details, obviously. Just walk me through anything important that happened since you met. I, I don't want to. 
Reliving it all is only going to make things worse. Astragala stands up and walks over to her kettle to start the tea. All right, you lovesick dolt. You want to know why exactly your magic's been stuck like that? It's because you don't have an outlet for all those emotions. Instead, you keep bottling them up. Literally, I guess. It's all that comes out because it's all there inside you. That weirdly makes a ton of sense. So let it all out. What, you think I'm going to judge you? No, I don't know. Would you rather spill it all to him instead? I can't, it's too much. Then tell it to me, a neutral third party. Actually, I can't say that I'm neutral. I'd need to find a new supplier if you couldn't fill my orders anymore. I do feel a little more at ease imagining this is all a business matter for you. Then just think of it like that. Astragalus pours their tea and returns to her seat with two mugs in hand. With a heavy sigh, Periwinkle finally relents and begins his story. 